it can be really frustrating to not have visibility in your sales funnel. It could be that your sales team is still jotting down their notes on pen and paper or they never add any notes in or log any calls because your CRM is way too cumbersome or maybe you're just relying on the collective memory of your entire team. Either way, you need to be able to see the call notes to know why a deal went through or why you lost a deal. So I'm going to show you how to do that without coming across a micromanager. Hi, my name is Cherry Yang, founder of AirOps Consulting. We help our clients with all of their Airtable needs. So if you need any special help, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and visit our website at airopsconsulting.org. To get started with today's tutorial, we're going to first create a interactions table within our Airtable. And right away, we're going to be adding a number of fields. The first one we're going to add is the date field. Now, I like to use ISO for my date formatting because it lets me sort the dates very easily later on because it goes by year, month, and day. The second field we're going to add is going to be our contact field. This is going to be a linked field to the contacts table. We're also going to add a field for our reps. Originally, we had John, Luke, and Sarah. So now I'm going to add them under a single select field. We're also going to capture the type of interaction this is. So in my case, I'm going to add a single select field and add in calls, emails, and in-person meetings. Now, if you only want your team to be logging calls or if you never have in-person meetings with your clients, if you're a fully remote company, then feel free to just log um, only the emails and calls that your sales reps are making. That's perfectly fine. And remember to just customize this database to your needs. And now I'm just going to move my notes column all the way to the back and also remove the attachment column. I'm also going to be pasting in some data so that we have something to work with. When your sales reps are recording real notes from calls or from in-person meetings, I recommend being as detailed as possible. Back in my sales days, I recall being very meticulous, like recording their dog's name and where they went on vacation last summer and what was their favorite restaurant in whichever city that they lived in. It's always really nice to have that personal touch when you're on a sales call with a client. Now that we've got all the fields, we want to name our interaction ID something a little bit more specific. In this case, we're going to use a formula field and the formula is going to be the date. So of course, when you're adding dates as part of formulas, if you try adding a date by itself, Airtable is going to give you all this date formatting that doesn't really mean anything. So we want to actually format our date so that we can understand and read it very easily. And we're going to add a dash in between and add the type of interaction it was. So now that we have July 29th to July 30th, calls, emails, and in-person meetings. And now I'm going to readjust my column sizes to make everything fit on the screen a little bit easier so that there's no wasted space. Back on our contacts table, we can see that after we linked the interactions table together, we can now see all the interactions on the very last column. What I like to do when I'm working and to make it less confusing for myself, I'm going to create a duplicate of the grid view and just call it the interactions view. And this is going to be my working view as I'm building out this process and this part of the database. As an exec or sales manager, you want to be able to see the most recent interaction that your sales team had with a client. So what we'll do is pull up the most recent note. There are a couple steps to this process. So the first one is we have to grab the most recent interaction date. We can see that in the case of Dan, 
we had talked to him on July 30th and July 31st. So we really want to be able to pull the note that we had in that in-person meeting. The way we're going to do that is through a roll-up field. We're going to roll up based on the date. You're going to be looking at the interactions table and selecting the max value it can get. And go ahead and save that. In the second step of this process, we have to go back to our interactions table and create a new field. This new field is going to help us pull the most recent interaction date based on the contact. So go ahead and add a new field. I'm going to call mine the helper field and put a dash after it, most recent interaction date. And what we'll do here is we're going to be looking up in the contacts table for the most recent interaction date. Now that we've created the lookup field, we can see that even though we've emailed Dan on July 30th, Airtable still recognizes that our most recent interaction with Dan is actually on July 31st, which is the record down below. Next, we're going to create our second helper field to help us determine which one of those two interactions is the most recent one. And the way we're going to do that is through a formula. The formula is going to be an if statement. In this particular if statement, we're going to be comparing our helper field we just built for the most recent interaction date, and we're going to be comparing it to the date of the interaction. If those are exactly the same, then we're going to mark this column as true. And if it's not, then we're going to mark it as false. And only the interactions that happened on the most recent date will be true. For example, the most recent interaction in this case is the in-person meeting that occurred on July 31st. In the last step, we're going to go back to our contacts table and add another field called most recent interaction note. In this particular case, we're going to be looking up to the interactions table and pulling the note. We're also including a condition here where the most recent interaction field needs to contain the word true. And voila, now you have your most recent interaction note. For the purpose of testing, I've kept my notes very brief, but realistically in the sales world, you're writing down everything from their dog's name to their past vacations to how many kids they have. So it turns into a lot of different notes. And one thing that's very helpful is being able to expand the row height so you can go ahead and adjust that however you like. Another way to look at the notes, if they're too long or you just want to take a look at some of the previous notes, you can always click into the linked record and that will pull up everything on that note. So let's say if someone wrote an entire essay about what they talked about and was really good about keeping their notes and you wanted to read everything, then go ahead and open that up. That's it for the first part of our interactions tutorial. There's going to be a part two coming up next week where I'm going to show you the most easy way to get your team to log interactions. Awesome work on building this database. For next week, we're going to make this interaction process even more foolproof so no one can have any excuses for not logging their interactions. Once again, my name is Cherry Yang, and I'm the founder of AirOps Consulting. We help our clients with all of their Airtable and automation needs. So if you have any sorts of database needs for your sales team, operations team, finance, production, manufacturing teams, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find us at airopsconsulting.org and follow the link below to check out our website. Thanks so much.